after our Queen O Tang weekend. We're here with the Canadian Tang Museum. As you can see, World of Tanks have sponsored us to be here. I'm representing a C2 Leopard 1 with a Canadian flag above me. Can't ask for anything better. Uh... Hey everyone, it's me, Matt. Thanks for joining me. As you can see, we are here with World of Tanks at the Aquino Tank Weekend. Yes, this is a sponsored event by World of Tanks. Thanks again to World of Tanks and for the Canadian Tank Museum for inviting me here this weekend to experience a whole plethora of exhibits. I cannot actually explain to you how much is going on this weekend. It's super exciting. I'm pumped to be here. As you can see, we've got armor in the background. Myself and my cameraman, Mike, who just uh, is behind the camera right now. Thanks again, Mike, for joining me. Uh, we just did a ride on a Belgian Leopard 1. So much fun. We overtook the Chieftain. It was kind of funny. Uh, not the Chieftain, the uh, YouTube content creator, the actual Chieftain tank. It was having some issues, but it's a Chieftain. It's supposed to, right? Um, but we're going to have a look around. There's so many exhibits, so many cool people to meet. I've already met a ton of really interesting people. The driver of the Leopard 1, um, nine-year reserve veteran working with armor. Really cool to see his experiences working on these vehicles. You can see the passion in those who are working on this site and working with the museum and the team. Uh, and even the team supporting us from World of Tanks, really engaged. And of course, the game itself, ton of fun. They've got a site here we can actually play some games. So I'm actually going to have a little bit of a, a game on some of their accounts because they've got a lot better of tanks than I do. I'll tell you that right now. Um, but it's really fun being here. So uh, we're going to take a look around. Today is the kind of VIP exclusive day with tank rides and looking at things a little bit ahead of the game before the majority of the crowd show up tomorrow and on Sunday. But speaking of crowds, let's speak about our gaming crowd as we dive into the world of tanks where players around the world fight for armor dominance. If you're a new or an existing player of the world of tanks community, it's never been a better time to be involved with the game and become a part of the tank battling online where you can actually play online for free on the PC. Make sure you check out the link below for some amazing content and features for existing or brand new players to the game. Also, if you're not aware of the World of Tanks Salute program, then you have to check it out. As a serving member of the military and a veteran, it's really humbling to see that the World of Tanks have gone that extra step beyond by supporting in-game benefits and exclusive features for eligible past and present members of the United States and Canadian Armed Forces. Some of the features include a free special style, a free Thunderbolt 7 premium tier 5 medium tank, discount coupons for World of Tanks premium shop, and exclusive bundles. This is a really, really cool feature. And of course, go check out the website and ensure that you follow the link to be identified of how you can get that particular capability. If you're ready to get engaged in some tank combat, use that link below and use the code COMBAT to help gain some unique goodies that will boost your in-game tanking experience. This code provides incredible extras for new players, such as the Cromwell B tier six British premium medium tank, 250,000 credits and seven days of premium access three rental tanks for 10 battles each, the Tiger 131 Tier 6 German Heavy Tank, the T-78 Tier 6 American Tank Destroyer, the Type 64 Tier 6 Chinese Premium Light Tank, and for existing players, don't forget that you're not forgotten in all this, three days of premium access, camouflage 2D style bargain, which is the checkered camo that will turn your tanks into a true Motley Crew style, a seven day rental of the premium tank Centurion Mark V, or 100,000 credit compensation if you already have this tank in your garage. So, come join me and many others in-game on the battlefield in World of Tanks today. So, let's get back to my visit. Of course, the uh, event was three days, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I flew in on the Thursday uh, into Toronto, uh, Ottawa is where this particular event happens in Oshawa at the uh, Ontario Tank Museum, now known as the Canadian Tank Museum, recently rebranded. Uh, and it was really, really cool to be involved in the kind of pre-ceremony, pre-Saturday and Sunday VIP experience. We're able to kind of practice and rehearse the leopards being pulled up and around and kind of neutral turning to present to the crowd. Super cool, really fun, unique experience where other content creators, including Cone of Arc and Funker 530 were involved in that particular event. Really, really cool. But I got to meet a lot of different people throughout the entire event, including my fans, 
members of the wargame community, including Chieftain, the Challenger, um, and Softline, who, you know, such a fantastic soul. She is so much energy, so much fun. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to talk to her for very long um, because she was as, as just as busy as I was. And it was just really cool to meet a whole host of different people, including someone from South America who was a avid war gamer in World of Tanks. And uh, they are actually uh, working and living in Quebec uh, in Canada, but they decided to come to the event. And uh, I'll put a uh, description and link to their channel in the description box below. Really cool to meet them by that priest and have a little bit of a chat with a fellow gamer. But because there was so much going on on this event, I kind of broke it up into multiple different videos. And this particular video is zeroing in on veterans. I am on the beautiful Australian Leopard with an Australian ex-serving Remy. Uh, of course, myself, Remy, in the British Army. We've got lots of Leopards here for the opening ceremony. World of Tanks at the back there. We've got the American flag, Canadian Leopard with Lottie over there, also from Australia. Uh, the British flag over on that Leopard. So we got a lot of people. Yes, I was able to meet a number of different veterans, either supporting the museum, uh, supporting the vehicles themselves, or just coming as a community together to be able to be a part of the experience of the Aquino Tank Museum a weekend, which inherently has its own reenactments, whether it be World War II, but I zeroed in quite heavily on the Gulf War reenactment, which I thought was absolutely incredible use of the CVRT or Combat Vehicle Reconnaissance Tract, which of course I went to Afghanistan with, I supported alongside Warrior with CVRTs. Um, so when seeing CVRTs in desert configurations, of course, I got uh, my heart racing a little bit. The American Humvee there, he's up on Overwatch. Iraqi forces are completely pinned down. Here comes their reinforcement. They're bringing in their heavy armor. The T-54, boom, fires back. CBRTs are, are swarming the Iraqi tank. Most of the shots are, are bouncing off the armor, but the crew is confused. Fifty more firing from the Humvee fire from the Dishka on the T-54. But speaking to the veterans of these vehicles really blew my mind away. And I think it's something I want to zero in on this video uh, and something that the museum did very well in supporting of veterans um, because that's what this is all about. It's about honoring those who have served in these vehicles. They are museum pieces. They are pieces of history, but they're also people's homes, people's literal livelihoods, things that protected them, brought them home to their friends, their family. Tanks and armored fighting vehicles are there for a purpose. Of course, they are inherently designed to kill the enemy, to destroy other tanks, but the other purpose is to defend and protect one another uh, as a crew and as a family within that crew. And it was really eye-opening to meet certain crew members that I never would have experienced elsewhere in my community of, uh, you know, network of people I know. Being able to talk to those veterans up close and personal about their experiences, particularly in the CVRT, was really, really cool. And we're going to have a quick chat to some of the veterans that actually operated those vehicles right away. So folks, a really unique part about the Aquino Tank Weekend is that there is actually a Gulf War reenactment team um, comprising primarily of 
basically CVRTs or Combat Vehicle Reconnaissance Tracked. Uh, British Army lightweight reconnaissance vehicle, of course, primarily used uh, through the Cold War period, of course, but also into the Gulf Wars in Iraq. Uh, and this entire crew of CVRTs here are all manned by veterans of the Gulf War, which is incredible. Now, I'm a huge advocate for supporting veterans groups, uh, and this is really, really cool. And it's the end of the VIP day, and I thought I'd get some, you know, just a little bit of exclusivity and a little bit of uh, calm in the area before I actually talk to some of the veterans, hopefully tomorrow when the live day opens up. But as you can see here, we're looking at the beautiful CVRT scimitar with the 30 millimeter rod and gun. Um, Ironically, when I was in the British Army, uh, this was the second vehicle, tracked vehicle I ever drove. In fact, it wasn't this particular vehicle. It's actually the vehicle that's tucked under that gigantic tent over there. Uh, that is the Sultan, which is the command post variant. They've got all sorts of variants here. We've got the Striker, as you can see here, the anti-tank guided missile system with the beautiful Welsh flag on the side of here. And if you come real close here, you'll also notice it has a Desert Rat on there. And if you look on here, Desert Rat, Desert Rat. So, of course, this was the same Desert Rats that I actually served with in Afghanistan. And ironically, CVRT also served in Afghanistan. Prince Harry operated in these vehicles, particularly the Scimitar with that 30 millimeter gun. There is a lot of variants of the CVRT platform. Starting from the left, we have the Spartan. So the Spartan is basically, and let me just double check, it is the Spartan. I'm pretty sure it is. Yes. Yeah. So the Spartan is the infantry carrier. So it's holding troops in the back. We do have the Striker here, anti-tank guided missile system, wire guided. The Scimitar, which is that 30 millimeter uh, rod and cannon, primarily designed for units like the Household Cavalry. It was a reconnaissance vehicle, uh, very, very fast, very, very agile. One of the funnest vehicles to drive. If anyone's willing to sell me one for a really good price in Canada, please let me know. Um, and then we do also have the Scorpion. The Scorpion has a smaller, uh, sorry, correction, a larger gun, a rifle gun, that is designed a little bit more in terms of sort of breaching. Um, I would say supporting of, uh, you know, taking out buildings and such. Uh, ironically, um, when I was in um, Battis or British Army Training in Suffield, uh, these vehicles were repurposed for op for or opposition force. So these vehicles were not uh, deployed to Afghanistan. These are older variants. They're a petrol driven or gasoline driven en uh, engine inside of these. The scimitars, the more modern ones, are driven with a uh, diesel engine. So and um, the transmissions, very similar. I think it's the TN15 transmissions. These things drive like the wind and they are so much fun to drive. And uh, so it looks like we've got a couple of scorpions here. Um, but the things that I really love about the scimitars is purely the ease of operation. It is two tillers, right? You're basically clutch, uh, not clutch, sorry, gears and tillers. And it just flies, these things fly. Um, of course, you can see how low it is. I'm six foot two and it's only a little bit higher than me. So that's why these are really useful for reconnaissance, low profile, really nice to tuck in, observe from target um, from a distance uh, with that big old sight on the side here. And if needed to engage with that 30 millimeter, but Primarily, this isn't really an op opposition vehicle. It's not going in to engage. It's going there to reconnaissance and look at the targets. Um, but what I am really, really happy about this particular exhibit or this group of vehicles is that they are run by veterans that operated not just the vehicle, right? Not just the series of vehicles, the family of vehicles, the actual serial numbers of these vehicles. So what does that mean? Well, the veterans from the British Army that served in the Gulf War tracked down the serial numbers of these vehicles because the system is very, very good at tracking down the registrations, the places they served and who served with them. And people reached out to the veterans that could find the serial numbers of these vehicles and tied them together. So they actually operated on the vehicle in the Gulf War and they are gonna be in the exhibition and in the Aquino tank weekend showing off these vehicles in exhibit tomorrow. It's just so exciting. I think that is so cool. And I'm a huge advocate for supporting veteran community and supporting veteran, veteran initiatives, this is a big one. I think it's really cool to see, you know, the Gulf War series of CVRTs and the veterans that supported working it inside those vehicles. This is their baby. If I could pick up my warrior from Afghanistan, jump into it and say, this was my baby, it would be a dream come true. Maybe one day it will happen, who knows? But I just really love the fact that CVRTs like this can be showcased in all their glory. Um, but one last thing, let's go look at the opposition force of these vehicles, because just like anything, they have to have an enemy, right? And of course, we still have the anti-tank guided missile from the striker here, but over here, we have their adversaries. And the adversary is the BMP. Very similar kind of design, very low profile, okay? An infantry carrier, got our back doors. We know for a fact, okay, that these vehicles, in the modern context, certainly not where you really want them to be. 
But the reality is this is an Iraqi armored fighting vehicle, which is pretty cool to know because it works perfectly against the opposition that it would be going against, which would be the CVRT. So CVRT 30 millimeter would eat this thing alive. It literally would eat this thing alive. Um, and of course the gun on this, similar to that of the Scorpion, of this beautiful vehicle, okay? A little bit larger, and of course also has the capability for an anti-tank guided missile. I really love this vehicle though. It's old school Russian tech. I love the fact that we've got <laughs> manhole covers on the side here to pop your rifles out the side. Unfortunately, it looks like this vehicle won't be running this weekend, which is, you know, it is what it is. It's mechanics. You can't just get parts of these things like that. But uh, love it. I love the fact that we have this fleet here. It's gonna showcase tomorrow at the Aquino Tank weekend. And uh, yeah, really cool sights to see. So. Let's go see some other stuff. Hey again, everyone. So as I mentioned in a video earlier, I really wanted to kind of interview the veterans that are operating these beautiful CBRT or Combat Vehicle Reconnaissance Track. There's such a fantastic collection here with the Gulf War veterans. And I actually have a veteran right in front of me here. Do you want to just quickly introduce yourself? Uh, hi, everybody. I'm George Clegg. Uh, I served with A Squadron, 1st and Queen's Dragoon Guards in the Gulf, and we operated a seven armored brigades formation reconnaissance squadron. Fantastic. And can you speak a little bit about 7 Armoured Brigade? Because I have a little touch and tie into the... Yes, so 7 Armoured Brigade were the first British formation that deployed uh, on Operation Granby. Uh, if you remember that the first part of Operation Granby, up until around about Christmas, we were in a defensive mode, or the coalition forces were in a defensive mode. And then after Christmas, with more reinforcements, the British forces increased their combat size to a division and also with an additional uh, armoured brigade, four armoured brigade. So seven armoured brigade and four armoured brigade were the main fighting uh, troops. In this period, they formed an artillery grouping with basically 16 fifth lancers and A squadron QDG in that particular organisation. And the idea was that they were going to prosecute the depth battle while the brigades behind us were uh, prosecuting the close battle. So our task and our mission was to look to see what was in depth of the armoured brigades. Nice, fantastic. So, and just a little bit of tie-in and sort of personal attachment, which is why this is so important to me, is because of the desert right on the side of the uh, tier, the flash there. Of course, my own serving uh, brigade that I served in Afghanistan. So I have a great link, and I, I really think it's an important thing to say that in terms of the veterans, we have a little bit of synergy, a little bit of linking. And Absolutely. different generational, but it's still, you know, kind of cool. Absolutely. So I think it'd be really cool if you could kind of show us some of these CBRTs and go over them a little bit and give your own unique experience, because, I mean, you literally served in combat with these. So, Okay, so what we're looking at here is the rear end with the back door open of the combat vehicle reconnaissance tract armoured command vehicle, which was a Sultan. So the squadron would have had three of these, zero Bravo with the commander in it, controlling the troops forward, zero Charlie with the second in command in it, reporting back to the regiment whilst also listening in on the squadron net. And then we were also lucky enough to have an intelligence CV, which basically assessed information that was coming down from the regiment and also assess what enemy we were seeing in uh, in the actual um, on the combat front so we had three of these looking across to the very very glamorous ferret scout car over here we were fortunate enough to have two ferret scout cars in the squadron nice. one was operated by the squadron sergeant major and the other by a liaison officer the liaison officer uh, that used to go back to the regiment and brigade to pick up orders and maps and the like. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to pan down the line. So we're going to pan past a CVRT Scorpion. Now the Scorpions were basically all batted to the battle groups and the close reconnaissance troops utilised Scorpions. If we pan right slightly, we then see the CVRT Scimitar. So in a formation reconnaissance squadron, we would have had three troops of four scimitars. And the scimitars basically, as you can see, they had an image intensifier sight. They also had Otis thermal image sights, which could be mounted on the commander's brackets and also a, another range of sights as well. If we pan past the Scorpion, we've then got two strikers. Now the strikers, clearly a 30 millimeter cannon is not gonna take out any enemy armor. So basically, to provide an anti-tank overwatch capability, we had uh, four, a troop of four strikers that had anti-tank guided uh, missiles uh, on there called Swingfire. Now, even in the Gulf, 
In 1990, Swingfire was a pretty ancient missile, wire-guided. But because it had a 3.14 kilogram warhead, basically it was retained, A, for that anti-tank capability, and B, to take out the frontal armour of T-54s and T-59s that the Iraqis had. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to transit and we're going to move across and look across to a couple of CVRT that are over there. One with the black rat on. Now that is a CVRT uh, Samson and next to it is a CVRT Spartan. So we also had uh, a troop, a support troop or an assault troop of four Spartans with basically dismounted infantry inside that did low level infantry uh, tactics and also did a little bit of engineering skills, maybe a bit of local minefield clearance, etc. Now our Remy section, we were fortunate to, enough to have a fantastic uh, Remy section uh, with a Northern Irish Tiffy called Dave <laughs> Lemon. What a character he was. <laughs> Basically, he would have operated from a, a, a Spartan and then the Samson, as it says, is basically the recovery vehicle. Um, and they did, like I say, sterling work. I can't sort of sing their praises highly enough. <laughs> Out in all hours, making sure that we were always on the road. And at the end of the mission, we only lost one CVRT at the end of the mission due to an automotive failure, and that was recovered back anyway. Wow. So a sterling job wow. by the Remy, well wow. done them. Fantastic. So in terms of the mission, I suppose you're all fully aware of long range reconnaissance. We're talking here about the SAS, two to 300 kilometers into Iraq, taking out Scud missiles and, all, and the like, and having mess meetings in their little waddies in the middle of Kuwait. So we left them to it. <laughs> If you come back a step in the tactical space, this is where formation reconnaissance sort of operates. So we're prosecuting what is now called the deep recce strike battle. battle. So attached to this squadron, we also had in a Sultan, a forward air controller, and in a Spartan, we had an artillery forward observation officer who operated from a Sultan, this was an RAF officer, and he controlled all the fast air that was in our area. We also had operating from a Spartan that you've just seen uh, previously, a forward observation officer who basically was in charge of bringing down um, multiple launch rocket systems and uh, artillery systems like AS-90. And they were the main strike weapons for us in that prosecuting the deep battle. If we had to use our weapons, it was sort of in an emergency, and really what they were doing is picking off stragglers that were bomb bursting out from the position. So that's where, we, that's where we were operating. We're operating in the deep battle space. As we've already said, the battle groups had recce troops that had CVRT Scorpions attached to them and those close reconnaissance troops would be operating five to seven kilometers in front of the battle groups making sure that they were, were not bounced by any. The duration is called a striker and the missile platform just raised up. Now this fires swing fire missiles and these missiles could take out any main battle tank. The range is approximately four, four kilometers, 4,000 meters. Did I get that right? Calvin, gentleman at the top, he was the gunner. So Calvin took out a few things. Did you take out a truck once? First one he hit was a BMP. Same BMP that we have down there, BMP-1. That is a BMP. But, and the commander is Sean Bannister. He wasn't in this vehicle. This vehicle itself was Calvin's. So he, he's original of this vehicle. The driver just goes to show how we make friends easy is Rick Stewart. He's up from California. So there you have it. Just the most incredible showcasing of the veterans that served alongside these vehicles that actually went into combat. It's fascinating to me. I'm very proud, very humble to be able to meet these people um, that worked on these vehicles to these particular serial numbers. Really, really cool. Um, I want to do a massive thank you to Jeremy, 
who uh, actually allowed me to come on to this event. He is the executive director of the Canadian Tank Museum. Jeremy, thank you so much. And of course, Michael as well, Michael Wong, who was the photographer supporting the media of the event and all the other team from the Ontario Regiment Museum and the Canadian Tank Museum. Really cannot thank you enough, um, including the actual director of the event. Um, just very well made, uh, very well showcased for veterans. As you can see him at the front there, uh, saluting off the M60. Really, really cool. But thank you again to the team uh, for inviting me and also to everyone else who's a volunteer who made the event a success. You can't imagine the amount of blood, sweat and tears that goes into making an event like this actually go uh, very well. So thank you again uh, for what you do and for keeping this event happening every year. If you are interested in going, of course, the Aquino Tank Weekend is happening every single year. You should go to Oshawa, go check out this event. It is incredible. It goes on for the weekend. This is just one of a few videos that I'm going to be making, though, folks. I've got so much content to produce that I'm not going to be able to squeeze it all into one video. This is a pretty long video for me as it is, at about 25 minutes or so. Um, so we're going to do more and more videos and just some upcoming uh, content that will be coming. I'm going to be doing a video on the Priest, the self-propelled World War II gun, 105mm. We're going to do a dedicated video on the Limber Gunners and me actually operating a 25-pounder gun in the World War II reenactment. We're also going to be doing some videos on the RWS LAVs and the LAV-3 and LAV-6 vehicles. We're going to do a quick video on some RC tanks and also some really good raw footage of just the tanks being engaged in the, uh, I guess, battle royale between the Leopard and the M60, which was really cool. We're also going to go over the 432, which is my first vehicle that I ever drove, did my tank driving license in. And of course, some hets of fun with the Chieftain, uh, the Chieftain content creator, and Cone of Arc. We had a little bit of fun doing the tank is on fire inside the Hetzer. So feel free to check those videos out. They'll be coming up in the near future. Thank you again so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And if you did attend the Aquino event and I did not meet you or was unable to meet you, I'm really sorry. I'm really hectic. For those who I did meet, it was a pleasure and an honor to meet my fans. And for those of you who wanted to come uh, to the event and, and actually meet me, thank you. It really does mean a lot to me. It's uh, very humbling to meet people that actually enjoy my content and my channel. So uh, thanks again. And of course, a final thank you to Wargaming and World of Tanks for allowing me to participate in this weekend. Of course, all of you, go check out this game. Please, of course, use the link in the description box below and make sure you use that code COMBAT to allow you to play World of Tanks with me in the future. Thanks again, folks, and have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.